Hi, I'm Karathalan and um, I am project lead for the Agency for Bayani Areas Development, which is better known as AWAD. And, uh, sorry, um, this is the area that is marked green that I work in. Uh, my organization works in water resource development in the arid areas of Punjab, Pakistan. It's quite a big area and we help farmers develop their water resource to conserve rainwater. Now, um, while working, um, we built and designed dams. And we decided like a few years ago that technology is a very good thing and we want to acquire GIS technology that is geographic information system that uh, help us resource map um, efficiently and save our time. So what we did was that we uh, acquired a GIS system and we start water resource mapping and then we could see it on the web-based interface as you can see here like this as well and you can see all the information. Well, while doing it for like a few years, as a project lead for Abad, I realized that there is one aspect that we are missing on, and that was the water disputes that arise in these communities. Because water is a scarce resource, it's an arid area. And we were not really having any um, database for water disputes, and I um, decided that, well, we have a GI system, we have the technology, then why not use it uh, for uh, building our water um, uh, with, uh, dispute database and help local uh, resolution mechanisms as a facilitator because we have been working in this area for quite some time. Now, uh, so I designed a project as a Build Peace Fellow for this amazing fellowship I built up and I pushed that and accepted it and I had the technical support and uh, the financial support and it started. And I thought it's going to be all rosy, it's going to be so easy, we have the tech, we have the willingness, let's do it, but no. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So um, you can see all these beautiful people. What happened was that right away we had two challenges. First of all, there were the communities, the farming communities that already had some local uh, resolution mechanisms. And uh, we could not go and just say that, oh, we are here. We, we think we can resolve it better and we replace it. No, we had to complement it and we had to gain their trust. And they were not the only stakeholders the parties to the conflict, the farmers, and then the elders, and the police, and the judiciary, they were all working there. So this was one challenge, and we had to do, in order to resolve, we have to include the stakeholders, we had to include them in the process. So we did a lot of meetings with them, we talked to them, and we took their views, and we tried to include into the what, how, what kind of facilitation that they required. So uh, it was a very um, long process, but we were able to gain some bit of their trust. Not all of it, it takes a long process, but still, I mean, we were able to start. But there was another challenge. You know, if, you're if you have a technology and if you're implementing a change, then you will also face some resistance from the organization, from the people who are going to implement it. So for my um, organization, my few teams had never uh, gone and resolved water disputes. They thought their work was only, you know, developing the water resource, but they did not realize that the dams and the ponds that we were building were not used to their own capacity when there were disputes. The progress that we intended by investing into these um, initiatives were not actually um, going anywhere because there were disputes and they, they were, these processes were slow and we had to be a facilitator. But in doing that, we had to convince the internal teams that yes, you have to do this additional task. Nobody wants to do additional work. And we have to make them take the ownership of this thing. So we had to do a lot of trainings. We had to sensitize them as well that you know, we were not in position to raise expectations of the farmers and we were not in position to really, uh, uh, you know, offend them because we were working with them. We are dependent on these communities. So these were a lot of trainings that we did and with our internal teams, with the stakeholders, with the people that were going into the field. So after like a very long time, we were able to start um, the data collection and data started coming and we were able to actually uh, translate into this beautiful visualization. So what was the purpose of this visualization? No, I mean, this is a pretty system and um, I mean, we input the data that what are the conflict, what are the parties involved, what is the facilitation and all that stuff. And then this is the area that I piloted the project into. It's called Chakwal and it's like a very big, big area. And this was something we were doing before these dots would uh, tell like it's a dam, it's a pond, what kind of an intervention it is. So now the second thing is, uh, sorry, the second thing is important. Now, we were able to map what kind of disputes are, what kind of water conflicts are happening around what kind of interventions. 
And right away, it helped us realize one thing. We were doing some of the interventions wrong. What we were doing was that we were building uh, dams on individual farmers' land, and we were um, asking these farmers to give access of water to the community, which at times individual farmers were not doing. So what we did was we asked them that, okay, from now on, we are going to invest in community dams. If somebody wants a dam or a water resource built on his land, then he has to transfer the ownership to the community so that everyone can uh, benefit from it. And we were able to do that because we realized that this is happening quite often. And we had not taken it into account. So it was like an immediate benefit that we um, got from here. So also it helped us create an organizational memory. As I told you, there was no water dispute database anywhere like in Pakistan before that. We had like many other conflicts about the disputes, nobody, like, I mean, not many people are dying, it's not a big deal. You know, you have other bombs and stuff, and so, but there was no database. So we created an organizational memory. We could also see that, you can also see from here that, you know, these big dots, more conflicts are happening here, and they are re repeating themselves. So we were able to pinpoint the uh, factors that were involved, and we were able to if not addressed, then actually recognize that these are the factors that are involved in these um, um, kind of conflicts. So, and this is this was these were the graphs. You know, I mean, uh, it's very easy for the tech teams to actually uh, look at these maps and think about things. But if it's a layman, a policy, um, if it's a policy maker who is involved in um, taking decisions. It's not really easy for the policymaker to uh, understand these technical things. So what we did was we used to generate, and we still generate, a monthly report on the basis of the data that we collect, the maps that we make, and we have graphs like this on them. And we are able to see that, I mean, these are one of the, I mean, two of the few graphs like, that we have. So we were able to see that, I mean, what is the reason for, uh, what are the reasons for the disputes, and what are the reasons that are prevalent, like we had like this family dispute regarding land a lot uh, a lot of times showing up so it was basically what's happening in the community that because it's uh, land is co-shared in that area and a lot of family members are around there and if one individual has a land and that is building a dam on it and we build a dam on it and then he's not giving access to uh, that water so the community uh, dam um, was an idea that was generated by knowing this statistic and also, we uh, were also um, getting data about how the facilitation was going and how the conflicts are resolved in that area. So you can see that the mediation was by village elders still is a very big thing because it's, an, it's, a, it's, a, it's a system that is there and it was happening. But we also said that, that like Abad was also facilitating and it was gaining some momentum. So these kind of statistics were um, happening and we were, we were able to give policymakers an idea that you can take a decision and take policy decisions how if we want to take the interventions or if we want to change how we are reacting to these uh, disputes or if at all we need to uh, react to this dispute. So um, that's kind of the system that we did. But I want to talk, I want to summarize my talk by um, talking about the lessons that I learned. I think the first lesson that I learned doing that was patience. We all think that we have the technology, we have a very good plan, and we can really, uh, you know, put it into in place, and it's going to work out. But as um, I realized that, you know, technology, although is a tool that uh, we can use as as and make it work as we like, but technology and humans have mutual interaction. So we really need to understand the constraints of the technology and our own constraints. And we have to really, really be patient about when we are working uh, with technology and humans and try to find a middle ground. And sometimes what we intend in the beginning that, oh, this is, we have the system and it's going to work like this, it might not. Secondly, I would, I mean, all, mm, there are a lot of peace tech practitioners there. We are here for the peace tech. Please trust in the process. If you start something and it's not going your way, it's okay. Just give it some time and it will happen and just keep on doing, you can change, have a plan B or something, but trust in the process. And um, thirdly is like, thirdly is something that um, Alina says as well, and 
um, um, it's uh, something I might not be able to, you know, say the same way. It's like nothing about us that does not include us is not about us, something like that. So it is like that. You have to include humans in it, no matter how tech, how cool the tech is, if it's not about us or not about the people, not about the beneficiaries, then it's useless. Thank you so much. <laughs>